49ers giving up three and a half points against the Cowboys. This this game's got a chance to be an, just an insane game. And I think it all really depends on if Dak plays another game like he played against Tampa. I mean, it's uh, I, it's hard to believe that can happen against that San Francisco defense. And I don't want to doubt Brock Purdy. But again, <laughs> I mean, this is this defensive front, you know, he's if there's going to be a mistake game where he, you know, does some, you know, turns the ball over, gets hit. I think it's definitely got the, the opportunity to happen against these Cowboys. If the Cowboys can look like they did on Monday night on Sunday, then they will win. But to look like they did against the Buccaneers, they're going to have to play a whole lot better th- because they're facing just such a better team in the 49ers. I think that a key to this game will definitely be like how clean of a pocket can Dak have? Like, can that offensive line handle Nick Bosa and all those guys coming for him? If Dak can feel comfortable, get into that rhythm, continue to use his legs a little bit to sort of just open up what they're seeing on the field, I think that that'll be super helpful. And then on defense, like, look, Micah Parsons started this year as like a defensive player of the year favorite. And then in the second half of the season, he was pretty beat up. Um, His body's really not built for the edge rusher position that he's playing as much as it is for like an off the ball linebacker. And and we were talking with him about that in locker room last week. I think he's playing at about 245. And if he stays at the end of the line, he really needs to make it up to probably closer to 255. He thinks Um, obviously some guys are playing it even heavier than that. And so how much is he going to be able to impact Brock Purdy? And also if Purdy's going to be able to get the ball so quickly to the McCaffrey's and the Debo's and all that in the world, then do you need Mike going to be helping defend that? I do think that uh, one of the guys who had the best game in the Cowboys Niners matchup was Leighton Vander Esch, just like really reading what the Shanahan offense was doing. And so having Leighton back <laughs> healthy, which he, they got him back on Monday night and he played really well, that's good. And then yeah. one other thing I'll say is a big glaring issue that we thought would hurt the Cowboys against the Bucks that I don't think ultimately did was their secondary. All the question marks, you've lost two cornerbacks, Anthony Brown and Jordan Lewis for the season. And I was talking to Cowboys safety, Jaron Curse in the locker room. And I was like, basically about how they handled it. And I think there's some degree to which the Cowboys just said like, Hey, if we don't have the cornerbacks, let's just put four safeties out there. Like, let's just have our most physical, our most like assignment sound guys out there, even if it's not necessarily the positions they've been playing all year. And obviously Tom Brady is, he didn't look like an accurate quarterback the other day. And obviously that offense hasn't been functioning in the way it did in previous years, but they got their hand on 12 of his passes and you don't need to get your hand on 12 Brock Purdy's, but if you can continue to just have your defensive line just disrupting the pass so much that your secondary is kind of being opportunistic, getting a couple opportunities, then I think the Cowboys have a chance. Now, all that being said, I think the Niners are a better team. So I, I go really back and forth in terms of what's going to happen, but I think that, that if the Cowboys win, it's going to be via the formula I just mentioned. I'm really excited for this game, uh, just especially the way that Dak played last week. And you, you think about how how highly thought of D'Amico Ryan's is. It's it's a it's a fun chess match, to like from a quarterback versus defensive coordinator perspective. Like you get to see like what a team whose quarterback like really needs them to make plays <laughs> yes. against a team a team <laughs> where a quarterback you know kind of gets to be the joystick for the the head coach, uh, like we saw last week with Brock Purdy and Kyle Shanahan. So I don't know. I, I think from a stylistic standpoint. These two teams going against each other is a lot of fun, and I just I just can't wait to see you know what the final outcome is on on this version of Dak because I think he's been playing really well this year. That Week 18 game was terrible, but outside of that, I think he's had you know one of the stronger years of his career. And then versus D'Amico Ryan's, who has been elite as a defensive coordinator since he got the job. Uh, this is this is like the marquee matchup of the weekend. So I I, I can't really call it on who's going to win because both of these teams are so good and. and so I, I I understand why the spread's closed, but I, I can't really call it either way. I, I I think this is kind of like a coin flip for me in terms of uh, who I think is going to win this one. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm same as both of you. I, I go back and forth staring at the matchups, and I think the Van Der Esch thing is really interesting. I mean, that's a good point because I think this is definitely one of those games where Shanahan could stare at it and go, okay, I got two backs who I know could rush for 1,000 yards if they're healthy and, you know, can be used in different ways. I got Debo. I can hand the ball off to Debo in creative ways. Let's just run it 60 times. <laughs> like, you know, let's, we'll throw in a couple designed runs for Purdy, be opportunistic with, you know, how he throws the ball, and let's see how that front handles, you know, us just running on him constantly and, and you know, whether or not they ultimately wear down. Run it at Micah, you know. 